the snake jumped across the... This is what people don't believe. Across the creek? Across the creek and bit me on the foot. And wow. then jumped and fell into the, into the water and swam away. So you're in Alaska. Mm. Your father took you on a, a little bit of a climb and you, you at that point decided, hey, you want to get a little bit more serious about that? And you talked yeah, to him Yeah, I think I had my 21st birthday in Alaska and my dad bought me an ice axe, a pair of mountaineering boots and a set of what we call crampons, which is a, a, the metal spikes that strap on the bottom of the boots so you can walk up steep uh, snow and ice. And he said, hey, all right, here's your 21st birthday, go climbing. And wow. I did. <laughs> wow. So I said, well, you know, he taught me all that he could. Yep. And he said, look, I, I've taught you all that I... Because in Alaska, there was mountains all around the place. So we were often went climbing. Um, and part of climbing in Alaska was you'd take a 12-gauge shotgun in case you came across a grizzly bear because there's grizzly bears everywhere. And uh, they are terrifying. You can't, you can't outrun them. If you, can't, you can't climb a tree because I'll just knock it over. You can't outswim them, um, so you take a, a 12 gauge shotgun with what they call a bear slug in the barrel, ready to go, which is just a s full s slug of lead, and you've got that strapped over your shoulder. Um, Imagine you got to get you got your aim's got to be pretty good as well if you. Yeah, I mean you can put about 12 rounds into a bear, a grizzly, and it's still charging at you. Wow. I've been uh, fly fishing in the back country of Alaska a couple of times. Mm, so you know what it's like. Mate, uh, there was one experience. We were in this river and we'd taken, we were in King Salmon, which is a remote place, and then you take the float plane even deeper, and I forget the name of the national park, but we were deep in the back country. Landed on a, a glacial lake, started hiking up this stream to, to catch fish all day. Um, and I reckon we probably saw about 40 bears that day, and they were all within 10 meters of us yeah. that we were and the guide was there and he had a he had a couple of guns on him and he was fully equipped for that situation it was at the peak of the salmon run mm. so there were so many salmon everywhere that the bears weren't even just eating the salmon they were just eating the eggs from yeah, the salmon just licking the, the just just licking <laughs> out the eggs <laughs> and then leaving the, the rotting there you we weren't walking on the riverbank we were walking on fish carcasses yeah uh, it, it was phenomenal, yeah. but I was on edge nonstop because these animals are huge they're and they're huge. scary. And it's yeah. I think that's um, it's something that we don't have really in Australia. Like if you go walking in the bush, you know the drop bear's not going to drop out of the tree and kill you. You know, like this. No, but the Americans are actually uh, more scared of our snakes. Uh, and sharks and spiders than they are their own grizzly bears. Yeah, they are. But like a snake's not going to chase you very yeah, far. Yeah, that's right. Well, if you've been bitten by a snake, which I have, I mean, it's it's pretty painless. You've been bitten by a snake. Yeah. What did you get bitten by? Well, they they don't know. <coughs> it it <coughs> was thought to be a king brown. It was up at Gympie. Oh wow! Uh, when I was about uh, nine years old. Wow. And uh, yeah, they don't, didn't actually believe me at first, but uh, yeah. Nine years old. Yep. Far out. Yeah. And were you exploring at the time, or were you just... No, well, my, gra my grandparents on my maternal side had a dairy farm, and so we used to go up there for our holidays, and we were down near the creek, and I was on one side of a small stream, and the, my pop's cattle dog was on the other <coughs> side of the stream. The stream is about a metre and a half wide, and the dog was annoying something underneath this tree, which was a snake. And I was standing exactly opposite on the other bank from this tree. And the s snake jumped across the... This is what people don't believe. Across the creek? Across the creek and bit me on the foot. And wow. then jumped and fell into the, into the water and swam away. But I saw the snake in midair. <laughs> <laughs> was it and I, I had the two, two fang marks in my foot. So was it a dry bite? Or did it, did you, were you really sick? Did you have to go to hospital for oh, a I went to roll, roll, In those so days, ex so... Nine years old, I was, you know, crying and and frightened and all that. And uh, thankfully, my nan was with me, and she carried me up to the farmhouse where my pop was. And he got out the old razor blade and put oh. two, put two cuts in the in the <laughs> in the snake bite and started sucking the blood out. And oh. which is what you don't you just don't do that. You these just, days. That's the worst move you can do. And then threw me in the back of the old uh, Morris Minor Ute. And yep, we, we putted, up, putted off to Gympie Hospital down the dirt road. <laughs> wow. That's that's what I remember about it. Oh, I had a tourniquet on my leg too. Wow. I 
my uh, best friend got bitten by a snake up at uh, Leamington National Park, Stephen's banded snake about, when did we work up there? Maybe 15, no, 15 maybe 20 years ago now mm. that we worked up there and he was uh, giving, a, giving a tour and got bitten by Stephen's banded snake and I think he's the only recorded person in the country that's been bitten by one of those snakes. Oh, okay. Um, but he was, he was really crook. He, was, uh, he got flown out mm. with the Westpac rescue helicopter Got the horse serum in him. He was allergic to that, which mm. uh, he was in and out of consciousness for a, a long time, and then recovered. And so, but anyway, that's the only other snake bite story that I oh, have. Okay. But we digress from the story. Yes, what yes. were we talking about? You were in Alaska. You oh, were hiking okay. with Gris- your dad. Grizzly bears. Yeah, t- we're talking about Americans <laughs> being more scared of our snakes and spiders than their yep. own grizzly bears. Yes, and uh, you. Your father has taught you everything he knows. So you're just about to go off and uh, I think learn from. From the oh, best yes, you could find. Just before I leave the country, we go on a sailing trip around because there's a whole lot of uh, glacial fjords around Alaska, and my, we were living on a sailboat, which is the boat that my father ended up sailing back to New Zealand. Anyway, we I we were on this four week sailing trip around parts of Alaska, and we pulled into this particular bay, and I had boat fever. I had to get off the I had to get off the boat, so I got the kayak off the back and <coughs> I paddled ashore. And I was going to go for a walk along this beach, and um, I couldn't quite get on the sho- couldn't quite get the kayak on the shore without getting my sh- my shoes wet. So I said, "Oh bugger this! I'll I'll find another place." So I just got the the paddle out and started to ease myself off because I'd grounded the kayak. And I'm just trying to get the, the kayak off the, the rocky bottom when behind me there's a rustle in the bush, and out rolls a grizzly bear cub. About this big, just like a bowling ball, out of the bushes, just wow. out on the beach. <laughs> it sort of shakes itself, looks up, and then there's another little ball that comes out. So another another cub comes rolling out, and falls onto the onto the beach. How far away? Uh, Fifteen meters behind me. Wow. And then I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, there's two grizzly <laughs> grizzly bear cubs. I, I'm stuck on the beach because I, I can't get off. Probably the worst thing you want to see. Like you can see yeah. a bear, but you see cubs. Two cubs, You're and then trouble. Mama Bear comes out, and she doesn't roll out. She just bulldozes her way out of the bushes, and then sort of stands out on the beach. She knows because they got they got bad eyesight, and the only thing that saved me was I was downwind, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do here? I'm stuck on the beach. So I just get the paddle, oh, and I try not to make any noise, and I'm just trying to ease the kayak off the, off the bottom. And I do that, and I'm afloat, and I think, okay, what am I going to do now? Am I going to start paddling and make a noise? And I just put the oar into the end of the water and just slow, and she's sniffing the air. She oh knows that she's... Something around. She's, I think she can see me, but she's not, gonna have a, she's not having a go at me yet, because between me and her is the two grizzly cubs. Yep. She's doing that calculation yeah, in her head. Do yeah. I need to go into? Do I need to go? Do, do I need to defend here? Yeah, going to. So she's. I can, I can see this, and I'm looking over my shoulder, but at the same time, I'm just slowly. I'm not trying to break the water too much, but I'm just slowly getting away from the beach, and I got away from the beach far enough to I thought, okay, I'm safe here. And then Mama Bear and, and the, <coughs> the two cubs walk past where I was grounded, and they continue on their way, and I thought, oh, thank God. So I paddle back to the boat, and I get back on the boat. And I decided to look up the area because uh, uh, the marine map from where we where mm. we're anchored, and the the marine map says we we are uh, anchored in Bateman's Bay. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And there's a little sidebar, as with a paragraph. It's called Bateman's Bay because the national park was called John Bateman, and right. they found his ankles in his boots on that very beach. Nothing. <laughs> 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 He'd been eaten by a bear. <laughs> You wouldn't have even got naming rights if you got in, <laughs> mate. Like, that's gone. So you just found your boots. Yeah.